The latest inflation data is in and it's not looking good for the Fed to start cutting rates at their next meeting. In today's video, we're going to cover the latest consumer price index report, what to watch in the months ahead to determine when the Fed will start cutting rates, and what it all means for mortgage rates in 2024. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome to Real Estate Watch. My name is Eric, and if I sound a bit congested today, it's because I am. Getting over a cold right now, but that's not going to stop me from giving you the best forward-looking real estate analysis that you can find on YouTube. Let's get right into it. This May 15th, we got the latest round of CPI data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. On a year-over-year -year basis, inflation measured by the CPI increased by 3.4% in April, which is pretty much in line with expectations. This was marginally better than the annual increase in March, which came in at 3.5%. However, it is still well above the Fed's 2% target and has yet to show significant progress in moving towards that goal. The Fed's next meeting, where they will make a decision on the path for interest rates, will be on June 11th and 12th, and this was the last CPI report to come out before they start that meeting. We'll get the inflation numbers for May on June 12th, but that's not likely to influence the Fed's decision as they will be ending their meeting on the same day. Recent comments by Fed Chair Powell support the idea that they will keep the Fed funds rate unchanged at that next meeting, which isn't surprising given how the inflation data is remaining stubbornly elevated. After that June meeting, the Fed's next meeting will be on July 30th and 31st, which will be key to watch. We'll have two more CPI reports released by then. I see one of two things happening after that meeting. Let's say the next two CPI reports don't show much improvement. I think we could likely see the Fed saying the same thing they are now, that they need to wait and see more progress in inflation coming down before considering cutting their Fed funds rate. On the other side of it, we could get two CPI reports where some progress is made. In that scenario, I don't think the Fed would cut rates at their July meeting, but we could see a change in their messaging, something to the effect of the current downward trajectory of inflation has been favorable and we're moving towards consideration of when it will be appropriate to adjust the current restrictive monetary policy. By the way, that's my best impression of what a Federal Reserve official might sound like. Which of these two is more likely? For that, we need to take a look at one of the main sources of inflation the Fed is watching, and that's housing, specifically housing rent. You see, the shelter portion of the CPI makes up one-third of the index. That's a lot. The shelter CPI reflects not just rents on rental properties, but also includes something called owner's equivalent rent, which is an estimate of what someone would pay in rent for the home if they didn't live in it or didn't own it. The problem right now is that shelter inflation is running so much hotter than the other measures of inflation and is what is giving the Fed a headache when it comes to their decision to lower rates. Let's take a look at just how hot it is running right now. As of April, the shelter CPI grew by 5.5% on a year-over-year -year basis, notably higher than the 3.4% growth in the overall CPI. But you'll notice that since the peak of 8.2% back in March of 2023, it has been steadily heading lower. And this is what the Fed is really waiting on, for the shelter CPI to keep moving lower and pull with it the overall rate of inflation closer to their 2% target. Here's a graph of the CPI without shelter included. You can see that for the most most part, it has returned to pre-pandemic levels. Yes, it has been creeping up the last few months, but it is still an, in an acceptable range from the Fed's perspective. The question now is whether the shelter CPI will continue to decline, and for that, we can look at what is currently happening with rents. Here's a graph of the year-over-year -year growth in Zillow's observed rent index. You can see that rent growth for the U.S. has already returned to pre-pandemic levels. At this point, you may be asking, why hasn't the shelter CPI returned to pre-pandemic levels if actual rents already have? This is mainly due to how the Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates the shelter CPI. It has a lag built into it, a lot of that having to do with the fact that leases are usually renewed once a year, so changes in rent for a given unit only happen once a year. Why doesn't the Bureau of Labor Statistics use something like Zillow's index to get a more real-time estimate? I have no idea, but the lag is there. 
When we put the growth in shelter CPI on a graph with the growth in Zillow's observed rent index, you can clearly see the lag. Rent growth peaked in February of 2022, whereas the shelter CPI growth peaked in March of 2023. It's a lag of just about a year from peak to peak. Let's assume that the lag in the shelter CPI is about a year. Growth in the Zillow Observed Rent Index hit its low point in September 2023. So by September of this year, we're likely to see the shelter CPI and the overall CPI coming a lot closer to the Fed's 2% target. But remember, we don't need inflation to hit 2% for the Fed to start cutting rates. We just need them to make it clear in their messaging that rate cuts are happening. After that, the bond market will react favorably. The yield on the 10-year Treasury bond will go lower and with it the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage. This next Fed meeting ending on June 12th is not likely to be very notable. Their messaging will likely be more of the same. Wait and see. But their meeting at the end of July will be the one to watch. We'll have two more months of CPI data by then and we'll know if growth continues in the shelter CPI to head lower to its pre-pandemic levels. If all this plays out as expected, I still think we could see mortgage rates head towards 5% by the end of the year as long as we don't have any black swan events that push inflation back up. As a result, we would see a notable pickup in real estate activity throughout the U.S. as affordability increases for buyers and more sellers will list their properties when they don't face a 7% mortgage rate to buy their next home. If you want to stay up to date on all the developments as they happen, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and hit that notification bell down below so you won't miss those videos when they come out. It would also be greatly appreciated if you don't forget to hit that like button on your way out to support the channel, help it grow. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.